Hello, uh, I'm Mike, and I'm going to talk about decorators in Python. You know that I'm Mike, you've met me before. Um, so uh, we'll start with functions. Right? So we can have a, f a function in Python, we'll call it adder. It takes an A and a B, and it returns uh, A plus B. We have now defined a function called adder. We can call adder on 5 and 6. It gives us back 11, right? There's a function in Python. Now you know the syntax. Very straightforward. Functions in Python are first class values. Uh, they are objects in, in and of themselves. Um, and they are of the class function, right? And so this means that you can pass functions to other functions. We do this in Ruby all the time, too. You can even do this in C. You can, you can now do it in Java. They finally figured out how to do that. Um, and so I'm going to write another function uh, called doubler. And it's going to take, um, I'm just going to take, let's start with, with, I'm going to call it double, sorry. It's going to take a function and it's going to return a function. I'm going to define a function inside of here, which is crazy, right? Uh, I'm just going to call this one g, because why not? going to take an A and a B, just like adder does. And it's going to return two times F of A and B. Okay? So that's, that is G. Um, I'll take this last line and explain double some more. And then what I just did there. So let's start with G. So G is a function that takes an A and a B and it is inside another function. So there exists some function f, right? And it takes this a and a b, it, call, it passes those to f, and then it doubles the result. And then on the last line here, this return g, that, re that means that the result of double of f is a function. So I'm going to pass some things, and we'll see how it goes. So double uh, takes a function. So I pass a function to it. It gives me back a function. In fact, it gives me back a function called g. Right? And so that's what double does. It gives you back a function. Uh, OK, well, so I can call that um, you know, t or something. So now t is a function. So I'm going to pass it uh, 5 and 6. And it gives back 22. Right? So it has, it has applied adder to 5 and 6 and then multiplied the result by 2. Okay, so that is double. Um, now, this is cool, right? Now we can, we can manipulate functions in ways, uh, in various ways. And so in Python, uh, you can actually, there's shorthand for doing this uh, because it's just such a common occurrence. I have not tried it from the REPL. We'll see if it works. Um, so I'm going to write at double. Hit yeah, does work. And then um, subtractor. What is that double? Uh, it, uh, it means the same thing as apply. I'm going to explain this. Uh, apply double to subtractor. Um, subtractor of a and b, return a minus b. OK, so now subtract, subtractor is a function. It takes an a and a b. But by writing at double in front of it, that actually is the same thing as saying subtractor equals double of subtractor. So, subtractor. All right. So this is the same as writing. This is so yeah. So this is the same as writing at double in front of it. So now if I run subtractor of 6 and 1, it gives me 10, which is 6 minus 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10. So we have a, uh, a function doubler. Um, super cool. Uh, we can go further by, uh, oh, classes. So classes are also objects in addition to functions being objects. And so we can apply uh, decorators to classes as well. And so let's say I have some class. 
called name, inherits from object, and I'm just going to, it's going to take a first name and a last name. Um, and self.first equals first. Crap, I made a mistake. Self first last. Self dot first equals first. Self dot last equals last. And uh, I don't have open objects, do I? Yeah, I hope this works. Yeah, I hope this works. Self dot first, self dot last. Yes, great. Okay, and so I have a name. Um, let's say person is just their name. That's all they are. Um, so their first name and their last name. What did I do wrong? Okay. Okay, so let's say we have a name like this, um, and it has a first name and a last name, and the full name is the join of first name and last name, right? And so uh, this is our class. And we can see on line 21 what it looks like to instantiate and call full name. Um, and, and this is the result. And so I'm going to run this uh, Python of decorators2. And you see it says full name is Dr. Emmett Brown. Um, and even though I just passed Emmett and Brown. And so that's because I added the, the honorific uh, decorator, which I defined above. So I'll show you how to make a class decorator. And so uh, just as when you decorate a function, you need to return a function. If you decorate a class, you need to return a class. And so uh, inside the honorific uh, function, um, we create a, a small little class. So honorific. Uh, is passed a class uh, on line four, and so we um, we inherit from that. So that's what this this little bit does here. So honorific class is the name class uh, plus this extension, where the full name is doctor plus the super call. I apologize on behalf of Python for how you call super. Uh, it's of the things they got wrong. It's the thing they got wrong. Um, this just calls super uh, and adds doctor in the front. And then since we've made that class, we can now just return that class. So honorific takes a class, uh, makes a subclass of it, and returns that subclass. And so down here, when I say, na uh, you know, instantiate name, it, it actually wraps it. And I actually get back an honorific class instead of name and it delegates everything through. And so that's how I get doc instead of Emmett and Brown. Those are decorators in Python. Any questions? Uh, oh, there's one thing I left out. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, <laughs> these are valuable, awesome things that we make use of all the time in Python. Therefore, there is a large, collect a lar library of these. Um, <coughs> Uh, so let me open a browser and show you uh, Python Punk Tools um, is one library um, and it's part of standard library. It's part of the batteries that are included. Um, some cool things in here are uh, partial. So there's a partial decorator. So if you have define a a method and you want to partially apply it like you would in Haskell, you can use the partial decorator. There's an example nowhere. 
Never mind, there was no example. Um, uh, and uh, another cool thing is wraps. Uh, there is an example. So uh, you can wrap, if you declare that you are wrapping another function, then all the uh, inline documentation and all of the, if you like ask for the name of the function, it does not tell you the name of the wrapped function, it tells you the name of the function that it wraps. Right, so if you want to transparent, transparently decorate something, or be a transparent decorator, you can use the wraps, um, mix it, uh, no, wraps decorator. Um, yes? Does this uh, ever get in the way of kind of understanding what's going on? Yes, uh, it can, um, but there are lots of debugging tools for it. Uh, and in general, like, it doesn't really get in the way very often. Um, but it can. And that's where wraps comes in, is because sometimes you want to know what the name of the method is and not the name of the decorator. Um, and so wraps allows you to, to see that. If I were DHH and I was writing Rails in Python, I would be using a ton of these decorators. Is that how Django is written? Yes, so that brings me to the other collection of, of uh, the other library for decorators is Django. Uh, provides a whole bunch of awesome decorators for it, um, such as you know requires login, um, uh, things like that. Uh, George just submitted a class decorator that got rejected uh, to Django um, for um, wrapping. Oh yeah, for wrapping class-based views, which you talked about last time, uh, with uh, a, a decorator, so you can say that you know this this class. Uh, requires the user to be authenticated before they use it. Um, so there's that, there's Django, which provides a bunch of cool decorators, and then there is actually a Python decorator library, um, which is just a wiki page of decorators that you can copy and paste, and it goes on and on and on. Um, many of these have been pulled out into other places. Memoize, how is that spelled in Django? Cached property, that's right. So cached property is what they, how they spell in Django, Mem memoize. Um, another one that we use often is um, turning a method into a property, which is basically calling it without parentheses. Um, you can say at property above. Um, and then you can also turn a method into a class method using a decorator. Uh, so you can say at class method, I think that's how it's spelled, with an underscore, I think. Um, and that's, uh, that's how we do that in Python too. So yeah, super cool. Uh, you can just manipulate functions. Uh, you, it's like macros, but more powerful is really a good way to think about it. Uh, that's what they picked like two decades ago. Um, yeah, and so if conditionals also require colons at, at the end of the then. And uh, that's the in itself, first thing, that's uh, the first thing that's kind of surprising also. Passive crazy it says the passive thing for self or something? Yeah, so self is the object uh, under question. And so uh, the first. The first argument to all methods has to be uh, self. Um, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, everyone names it self. Um, yeah, it's explicit. So, you want to see an object self is the object, yes. Um, yeah, exactly. And like, it means an instance of the class. It's an instance of the class. Okay. That's exactly what we would do in Ruby. Right, class name, um, def initialize, first name, uh, and then you would say self dot first name equal. Like you can say this in Ruby. It's the exact same. There is no uh, scenario in which you actually be able to use name without an array of right? That's right. Not that I know of. 
You cannot undecorate. You cannot un yeah. So you, you can't choose to use honorific or not. In this case, uh, it's always decorated. You could, instead of doing this, you could say honorific of that. Yeah. Good call. So, um, are the common words really, is that, um, sorry, uh, the act really all that is words and methods and process? That's right. So, why do you use a class here? Is that just like that? What? Why do you use a class here? Is it just to show us? Just to show us, yeah. Uh, we do not actually have code for like this. Uh, this is just a quick example. Do you have examples of this you might? Um, I don't know if it's a uh, Not on this computer. Not on this computer. OK. Can, can we show that on this recording? Totally. Okay. I'm gonna say no, regardless. Okay. The answer is no. I'll find I'll find the link later and share it. Yeah. Yeah, it's all over Django. Can you decorate decorators? Yes, you can stack them. And so then what happens to the ones that were decorated the first decorator? They go vertically. And so if you stack like, um, yeah, sure, memoize, you can't memoize a class, but then it, it turns into um, memoize of honorific, like that. And so you're getting a class and returning a class each time. And so you're just decorating and decorating. Does Django use it for like view like view like some people do like trip account style and rails decorating objects for your view presenters, right? Oh I see like a presenter. Not sure. Maybe if you can think of it, then maybe. <laughs> I know a comparator to Django uses it for routes. And so you define some method, and then you say, um, you, you can say, define like create user, um, and that would take like uh, the environment and do some stuff. And then here you say app.route to uh, users post. Thank you.